Okay, we're live now. <laughs> hello, hello, one more time here, Facebook, Facebook Live. And this time, uh, this is Monica, uh, your mm -hmm. host with Lynn. And Lynn is the first time we're doing this together, right? It is. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you know, uh, Craig was busy today. And well, we decided to do it together. And for the people that are, uh, don't know me, um, I'm Monica Stoker. I am the author of El Blog para Aprender Inglés and El Blog del Inglés. And, and with me is Lynn. And mm -hmm. uh, okay, so nice having you here. And you, can you talk a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. Well, thank you for having me, Monica. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name's Lynn Copperley, and uh, my my website is putitlikethis.com. And I'm an online English teacher like you, Monica, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and but you work on your own. You, yes, uh, I'm, you I just uh, work on my own remotely, yeah. right? Remotely, yeah. and all my classes are online. But mm -hmm. I teach. I teach. Basically, I tailor make my classes to fit the objectives. My my goal is always to try to find to help people find their own voice in English, because and to try to express their own personalities in English. That's my my overriding uh, goal. <laughs> and you are in Valencia in Spain. That's right. right. But I'm so based I'm in Valencia. We, we are in Madrid, and she's in Valencia. Okay. Mm -hmm. In, in mm -hmm. case you want classes from Lynn, you can mm -hmm. contact her <laughs> in the page. Put it like this com and you can Thank see you. it in uh -huh. this uh, banner uh, mm -hmm. below so today lynn we are talking about uh holidays. holidays and i i we thought about this topic because we thought uh let me see i think i'm Hema is going to be here hi Hema, you're so loyal because <laughs> it's so difficult yes i know Hema too yeah, hi yeah, Hema. Hema and, yeah. So, uh -huh. well, uh, Gemma, uh, we are going to talk today about uh, holidays. And I thought that this was a good um, topic because we are, many people are only thinking about holidays now. Mm -hmm. because we we say in English, we say it's that time of year again. <laughs> yes, that time of year again, because it's, it's, everybody's tired. And then when the weather starts, it starts to be hot. You don't feel like work, at least here in Spain, is very, very hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the, well, where you feel like thinking, well, oh, where, where am I going to go? And, and after we had a very difficult winter, at least in, mm -hmm. in, in Madrid, and mm -hmm. also plus the pandemic. So uh, uh, we wanted to talk about like different topics, uh, different, divide the, the topic in different areas like um common questions let's let's see common questions mm -hmm. that you would ask for example we, let's start with this one uh, so lynn i'm going to ask you where do you usually go on holidays and why ah uh, <laughs> that's a lovely question well yeah. I, I um the thing is because i'm an expat living in in spain which is not my native country Often when I go on holidays, it's to visit my family. Mm -hmm. And so um, although I'm English, my family now all live in New Zealand. Oh, so, yeah, that's so, very nice. Yes, it is. Yes. But unfortunately, it's a long, long way away. And uh, I can't afford to go there <laughs> every year. So we usually, I usually go to New Zealand every two or three years. Um, and to visit my family. And then when I'm not doing that, then uh, we usually go on holiday in Spain because I want to still discover Spain. So there's lots of lovely places to go on holiday, but I really like the north of Spain, like Asturias and uh, the Pyrenees. I've never been to Galicia really, but I'm hoping to go soon. So uh, I'm trying to discover Spain. What about you, Monica? Where do you usually go on holiday? Okay, I'll tell you later, but I have a question mm -hmm. about New Zealand. How uh -huh. long does it take you? That's another oh. question. That's a very mm -hmm. common question that everybody <laughs> gets wrong because the subject is it, no? Mm -hmm. So how long does it take you to get to New Zealand? 
Ah. So for, uh, when you take the, the the plane here from, I suppose, well, suppose Madrid, Madrid to well from Valencia, right? Oh, oh, yeah, I always have to go from Valencia. Yeah. How and long then does my, it take you? Well, the problem is my family don't live in the capital city of yeah. New Zealand. They live in another city, still on the North Island, but they don't live in Auckland anymore. Mm -hmm. So I usually have to get five flights. <gasps> so I usually have to go from Valencia Five, to right. Madrid mm -hmm. and then Madrid lately the, the, there's a very fast route now via Dubai so then I go Madrid Dubai then I do Dubai Australia Sydney Sydney Auckland and then I change flights again in Auckland and I go Auckland to Napier so <laughs> So yeah, I have usually yeah. that. And the journey in total is very good now. And it takes 35 hours nonstop 36. from door to door. 35 My hours. My God. You get a wooden butt. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but that is, that, is, that is fast, Monica, because a few years ago, before you could fly via... Um, Dubai, I used to fly, you could either fly via America, via Los Angeles, or via Asia, because you're going around the world, basically. So you can either go through Asia, through Bangkok, or Hong Kong, or Singapore, or via Los Angeles and Fiji. Yeah. Um, and then I, the longest journey years ago used to take 48 hours. So two which days? Is a, Two days. Two days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, only sitting mm -hmm. on yeah. the plane. It's, it's <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> well, I and went... in the airports. You, you, yeah, the highlight and the is changing in the one, airports. One uh -huh. or, or on another plane and all that. Poof. I remember the, the only trip mm -hmm. I made like that was uh, to Bali two years ago, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there was a woman going to Australia, I remember, the same plane. Mm -hmm. And I, I was... Um, I was asking her because she seemed exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was even to Bali for me, but because you are exactly on the other end of the world. Yes. That's why. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because yeah, if yeah. you if you went across all the the, the globe and uh -huh. you, you will you have get to go through the earth. center of the earth. It's and apparently somebody told me actually that Valencia is directly it's the it's the direct yeah. link to New Zealand if you Zealand. if you went through the center of the earth but I, I'm happy to fly over it it's okay <laughs> yeah well okay but that's the reason because there's 12 hours of difference yeah mm -hmm. and, yes, and uh, that's a lot of hours um, mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, that's that uh, that is uh, okay and where do I usually go on if mm -hmm. the people the audience we have if they want to tell us about their holidays are we happy to you just write a comment and we'll talk about it uh, mm -hmm. where do I usually go on holidays well we usually go basically um, around Spain, usually mm -hmm. uh, to the beach, either to the south. Uh, also, lots of time, I, I spend many, many summers in Costa Brava in, in Catalonia. Oh, really? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I like, we love that area because, um, as you know, my husband is Dutch and mm -hmm. I think it's easier to to come to Catalonia when, when the family, we join the family there. And also my parents loved uh, this area. Uh -huh. And then um, I, I also go to the Netherlands quite often. Well, quite often, at least once a year, no? Mm -hmm. uh, at least for Christmas. Well, mm -hmm. well, well, with the pandemic, this changed because uh, we haven't been there for, for already two years, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, almost two years. But usually every uh, every Christmas we go to the Netherlands, and every in the summer we do something in Spain, mm -hmm. and or last year we went to France. Uh, oh example. wow! Yeah, uh -huh. France, to the Alps, um, uh -huh. and it, it was fantastic because uh -huh. uh, uh, it was an opportunity, and it was so green, and the mountains were so so nice. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lot of vegetation because. In Spain, is, it tends to be drier, no? You're not... Well, in the, it does, in the north, I mean... In the uh, north, that, no, well, in Valencia, it's 
in Valencia bigger. in the summer I I hate the worst month in Valencia is August so yeah. that's why we prefer to go to the north of Spain because the temperature because the, it's 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 a horrible heat in Valencia yeah. in August uh, you know, I don't it, like ah, it at that, all yeah I understand because you mm -hmm. have good weather all year round in Valencia of course yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, okay so uh, well we I think we explained the reasons why so sometimes mm -hmm. it's family uh, reasons and other times is just because you like to escape from the heat and and also in, our, in my case is that uh, well I changed a little bit the landscape because also Madrid is quite dry it's very uh -huh. dry and the temperatures are also quite very steep. hot in the summer right? very hot yeah, yeah. it's yeah. only the difference is that you don't have the beach <laughs> you mm -hmm. in Valencia mm -hmm. you can go to the beach here now we have the beach that's okay yeah uh, another common question uh, what do you usually do when you go on holidays? Link. <laughs> well, we um, we are a bit adventurous, so we oh. like to do adventure sports when we go on holiday with my kids and my husband. Yeah. So we like to try to go places where we can do canyoning. Oh. Do you know canyoning? canyoning uh -huh. Yes, I know. Canyoning. But that's like uh -huh. You have to be fit. Well, yeah. we, we get a guide. I mean, we're not experts. We always go uh, with guides, but we do like to do canyoning. So we, or, or some kind of like other sporting activity, if we can do kayaking or canoeing or, or something. Mm -hmm. um, and we usually always go walking. We always do some hiking when we're on holiday. So we're quite active when we go on holiday. We don't, we're not the kind of people who want to just go on the beach and relax. We, 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 we've only in, I mean, my, my, my girls are grown up now. They're 22. And in all of the 22 years, last year was the only holiday that we've ever had at the beach. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, well, you want to do activities. The last well, because thing you're going to do, yeah, uh, because be it, it, we've yeah. just never done beach holidays. And yeah. last year we went to the beach because, of course, with COVID you couldn't go very far, so we just yeah. went up the coast to Peniscola. Um, but even then, we did snorkeling. We all learned how to oh. snorkel. We'd never done That's snorkeling nice. before, but we want to do something. We're not there. We're not the type. And also for my skin, I'm not very good on the beach because I burn. I'm just not the right person for the beach. Oh, me neither. I have a mm -hmm. big problem with that because I get red. I don't yeah, like it too. anymore. I used to mm -hmm. like it more when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be lying on the beach. Uh, no. no, me neither. No. No. Uh, but I'm not as uh, sportive as, as you are because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I could manage with canoeing or any. No. I, I'm getting very clumsy with this kind of thing. So it's uh -huh. more like hiking. We do more hiking. Ah, we've been several times to Canary Islands or also, uh -huh. especially to Tenerife because I have a friend who lives there. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's quite nice because you can go in the winter sometimes and the weather is quite nice. And there the temperatures are not very extreme. Mm -hmm. And you can do a lot of hiking there. Because yes, there I've, I, I've, uh, I've heard. Uh -huh. so, yeah, okay, so, but so, I've never been to the Canary Islands, no. But I, I like well, a, an a, adventure it's holiday. It's a nice place. It's a nice place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Emma also says, likes hiking. Say, I think, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's one of the best uh, sports. I think mm -hmm. you don't have to mm -hmm. make a tremendous effort and. Mm -hmm. Is, and when uh, we we've been visiting Asturias many mm -hmm. times, we've visited Asturias, and I love Asturias for that because the landscapes are spectacular. Ah, when you when you go walking in Asturias, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, um, next one. Um, yeah, you can you can do that. You can ask right, me. So so this is: Are you going anywhere nice this year? Or are you getting away? Now, that's a nice phrasal verb, to get away. And to get away has the sense of escape because the phrasal verb to get away means to escape. So, of course, you can be in a, if you, any of you watch um, a crime series, they often talk about the getaway car for the bank robbers. It's the, it's the car that they escape in. But we use that phrasal verb also for holidays and we say, are you getting away anywhere nice this year? Are you escaping anywhere nice this year? So Monica, are you getting away anywhere nice this year? You said you're, you're tired of teaching and it's hot and you want to have a break. Are you getting away anywhere nice? Yes, 
I am going to Croatia. Oh wow! Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is that, that is a surprise, right? But I, I had an invitation because it's my birthday, and oh, wow. I got this special invitation, and I am going to be away for ten days in July, I think. Oh, and, lovely! And uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to it because. And ha very... have you been to Croatia no, before? No, not really. I was at the airport. Uh, two years ago, but mm -hmm. this year we are going to stay there. And now I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about this because we booked this trip. A friend of mine and I, myself, uh, like in January, we when we didn't know if it was going to happen really mm -hmm. because we thought, woof, with the COVID, who knows? No, mm -hmm. maybe we never get to go there. But I, I paid an insurance. Because uh -huh. I thought maybe we have to cancel. You you don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. And I and and then actually the the tickets were very very cheap because oh, wow. at that time mm -hmm. at that time nobody was going on holiday. No, nobody was going on a holiday. But I do have to do the PCR and this kind of thing mm -hmm. because my, my my vaccine is mm -hmm. not going to be. Um, I'm going to have the second shot next Saturday, so I am not oh, going to be in time for that because you have to wait 14 days later. Yeah, so, so it's not going to be yeah. fully active. Uh, exactly. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a very good expression. Mm -hmm. My vaccine is not going mm -hmm. to be fully active, she said. <laughs> you know, you notice that? Because sometimes you're looking for this expression. How do you say that in English? Mm -hmm. It's not going mm -hmm. to be fully active. Uh -huh. Right. And so I have to... Uh, I, I just have to do the PCR before and then mm -hmm. I'm leaving and um, well, I'm going to get back uh, around the 15th, I think. And you? Oh, uh, that's lovely. You, where where are you we, we, we hope we are because my youngest daughter is going to be her 18th birthday and we always oh. promised that we would go to Lisbon. But last week they closed Lisbon because of COVID. They have another oh. <laughs> outbreak. <laughs> But we, we have until August, so it's not her birthday until August. So I hope that we can go to, to Lisbon. But if we can't get to Lisbon, we'll go somewhere, I'm sure. Uh -huh. I'm yeah. sure we'll find somewhere nice. So uh, Lisbon is, have you ever been to Lisbon? Yes, I've been to Lisbon mm. many times, but w I've always gone just with my husband. My husband used to live in Lisbon. Oh. Uh, many, many years ago, and he showed me Lisbon and we love Lisbon. And well, on the very quiet. few occasions, yeah. not many times that my husband and I have been had holidays together, I think maybe three or four times we had a weekend without the children. And we always yeah. went to Lisbon. And when we came back, we always told the children how great it was. And um, and then it became a family plan. My my youngest daughter said, when I'm old enough to drink, I want to go to Lisbon and go to these lovely bars and these restaurants that you always talk about. <laughs> yeah, so, it is, it so, is so that's it why is. we said Absolutely. when she was 18, we will take her to Lisbon and my other daughters are older. So now we're all going to, I hope we can go to Lisbon and then her their dad can show them Lisbon. I was thinking <laughs> any, this is a similar this is a similar question, actually. Any plans mm -hmm. for the summer? Yeah. And and maybe somebody of our audience, if they want to share their plans for the summer, if they mm -hmm. have any, uh, yeah. we will be delighted to talk about it. So yeah. write a comment and put your uh, plans. But it's the same kind of question, no? It's the same kind mm -hmm. of question. Uh, where yeah. are you going? Yeah, yeah. Any plans mm -hmm. for the summer? Any plans and for the summer? I was going to say that also, I was going to add that Lisbon, is a place that I think is um, not only Lisbon, Portugal in general is a, mm -hmm. is a great uh, place to go. I, yeah, I because the, the the food is lovely, the, the people the, are really the people nice. Are lovely, everything. And, is and Lisbon, it, there's just so much to see. It's yeah. so interesting in Lisbon. Yeah. I think it's I really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love okay, it. so we are going to go to another section: is common sentences. Mm -hmm. So we, I think we have already used uh, some of these sentences when we were talking about as, answering the questions. And the first one we have here, and I'm thinking about spending some time. This is, mm -hmm. this is a future um, 
uh, tense. Uh, notice how you use the the present continues to speak about the future and not the present tense. This is a very common, um, let's say, mistake, mistake, isn't it? It's a mistake. And, uh -huh. and, yeah, from Spanish speakers because we use uh, the present tense many times to speak about mm -hmm. the future. And in English, it's not always possible to use the, mm -hmm. the present tense. So well, we're about, using. I think the mistake yeah. that I notice the most mm. with Spanish mm. people is that they use the present simple mm -hmm. to talk about the future, which we can in English, but not in this sense. Mm -hmm. We would use here present continuous because it means that it's not finished the action. Yeah. So I'm thinking about spending some time. We also use present continuous as well for future things that we have arranged if we've made the arrangements you can say i'm flying to lisbon which is i'm flying to lisbon in august i would use present continuous if i have the ticket if i've bought the ticket then i would say i'm flying to lisbon because it's a fixed arrangement it's all it's all secure mm -hmm. and then we use present continuous to express and, the and, uh, and here we, in in this case is it's future too, but in mm -hmm. this case is another form because it's not really totally sure that you're going to do it. No, it's just mm -hmm. uh, here you're just expressing something that you would like to do in the future. Mm -hmm. I I'd, I'd like to visit or see it because I've heard it's a great place, but I'm not sure that I, if I'm going to do it. No, this mm -hmm. is just uh, it's a kind of wish. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because well, but design. here we have a combination of tenses because uh, this is I would like uh, it's it's uh, it's really like a conditional I would mm -hmm. like or model verb use but then because I've heard is the is the present perfect that's right because uh -huh. I just recently heard that it's a great place no and so mm -hmm. in the case of Lynch she would say I like to visit Lisbon. Mm -hmm. Because I well, your your daughter would say this, uh, kind of, yeah, uh -huh. because you already you have already been I've there. already been, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That is the difference. And then another tense we can use, and this is you you can explain this because this mm -hmm. is the prediction how we use will, no? Uh huh. Yeah. So there's there's three different ways in this mm -hmm. banner that you can express future wishes so you can say i will which of course many people believe is the future tense but you've got to be very careful with the word will in english because we it's not the most common way of expressing the future now we use will when we decide something spontaneously so for example we can say i'll go to india one day i'm sure mm -hmm. I'll go there, I'm sure. And we use it for, in this sense, it's a prediction. And of course, we also use will for spontaneous future. So if the doorbell rings, ding dong, you say, I'll get it. Now, in Spanish, that's a problem because in Spanish, you use the present tense, no? Lo cojo. And I, I, yeah, yeah, but yeah. We, we say, I'll get it. And we also use will for predictions. So also in fairy tales, in Cinderella, the fairy godmother says to Cinderella, you will go to the ball. <laughs> yeah, she's making a prediction, right? Yeah. So we use will for prediction. But usually if we're talking about our holidays, we're not actually predicting, usually. Okay? No, no. Well, and uh, mm -hmm. more common would be to use the going to future when you're talking about holidays or the present continuous. Now, I touched on that before. If you have an intention, then we use the going to future. So in August, we're going to go to Lisbon or I'm going to do some canyoning when we go on holiday. Now, those are our intentions. They're the things that we want to do in the future. And so we use going to for intention. And then the other uh, present 
tense, we could use present continuous, but that was the one I told you about before. That's for if you have, it's not only an intention, but you've made an arrangement, you've done something. It's a fixed plan. Then you use present continuous. So if you've bought the ticket, you say, I'm flying to Lisbon. If I say, I'm going to fly to Lisbon, I haven't bought the ticket yet. It's just an intention, right? So I'm going to fly to Lisbon is that's the way I intend to travel to Lisbon, but I'm not sure. I might change my mind. But if I say I'm flying to Lisbon, I have the ticket and it's certain that I'm going to do it. I think that's mm -hmm. a great explanation because many times people are not sure what to say, if either to say going to or the mm -hmm. present continues. And what is really the difference? Mm -hmm. And and basically is like the degree of planning that the, the mm -hmm. if you already have got the tickets like you said, mm -hmm. li like you just said, or if you have done some arrangements, you have it on your agenda, you know that it's exactly that day, mm -hmm. it's going to be the present continuous. But going mm -hmm. to is just something that you have planned, but you mm -hmm. have not made the arrangement. You have okay? made well, the arrangements. Okay, I want to repeat that because it's, in, 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 in our mind, I think it's very difficult to distinguish these, yeah. these two different tenses. No, I can give yeah. you another example as well, mm. when it's important that you notice it. And that is, if you are in a conversation with somebody, let's imagine, um, let's imagine a boy is asking a girl to go out with him, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, do you want to come to the cinema tonight? Would you like to come to the cinema tonight? If the girl says, mm, I'm going to go to a restaurant tonight, that would be an intention, wouldn't it, yeah? Or I'm going to meet some friends later. That's an intention. And so if you say, I'm going to, then the boy might think, okay, maybe I can change her mind, yeah? And he might say, oh, but forget about your friends. Come to the cinema with me. It'll be much better. OK, so if the girl replies with going to, then it's an intention. That's something that can be changed. OK, yeah. But if the girl replies, um, I'm meeting some friends tonight, present continuous, that English people pick that up and then probably he's not going to try to change her mind because she's made it very clear it's a fixed arrangement don't ask because I've just refused. I'm not going. <laughs> that is a very okay. good example because it's right? really so, difficult to remember that. Uh -huh. remember exactly so it's sometimes the, it's like the context um, where you it's can the context say, as well. Yeah. Or also, for example, in business, yeah. in business, your boss can say, uh, "What are you doing?" And you can say, "Well, this afternoon I'm going to call those customers," and then the boss will say. Because you've said, I'm going to call, that's intention, right? <laughs> Your boss might say, well, I've got something more important for you to do. Come <laughs> to my office and I yeah. want you to help me with this, right? Yeah. Call the people tomorrow. If your boss comes and says, what are you doing this afternoon? And you say, oh, I'm meeting these customers. Then the boss will say, oh, dear, I wanted you to help me. Never mind, I'll go and ask somebody else. <laughs> okay, so right. incredible how one sentence can tell so much about what you're thinking exactly here you have like the, a summary also or an explanation and the banner i mean the manner mm -hmm. uh, related to holidays the topic uh, today's mm -hmm. topic no? present mm -hmm. continuous arranged future we're flying to los angeles and then renting a car and driving around the west coast mm -hmm. that's uh, mm -hmm. That is the arranged future. So you're absolutely sure you're doing that. You have the mm -hmm. tickets. Uh, you rented the car already. Um, mm -hmm. you know and you have you're your going. itinerary where you're going yeah. to do. Yeah. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. then we can change. This is another way to talk uh, uh, with the present tense. In this case, is an habitual action, no? something that you regularly do. Uh, I usually go to uh, the Netherlands on holiday, for example. This is my case, um, mm -hmm. but for Christmas, not in the summer. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Aline, you usually go to uh, Asturias, for example. Uh -huh. That's yeah. something frequent. Mm -hmm. and, yes. and then 
I think everybody understands this. It's tense. a repeated it's, action. It's yeah, a regular repeated action. action. Repeated. The only problem mm -hmm. comes with these tenses when you mix it up with the future, because mm -hmm. a lot of people think that this can be future. Mm -hmm. Or no, uh, to talk about now. To talk about mm -hmm. now, we use the present continuous, not the present tense. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, you can use the present tense to talk about mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Lynn and I, we're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is present continuous, not mm -hmm. the present tense. And mm -hmm. many times there's a confusion with these two tenses. So mm -hmm. present is a regular habitual action, something that you frequently or not frequently once a year or but there is a kind of there is know, a repetition pattern, in a repetition in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in time. Mm -hmm. so it's, mm -hmm. um, another example, mm -hmm. I enjoy sightseeing. Sightseeing is um, well, we can translate it as um, a third turismo, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah? Well, literally is ver, no? Sight ver sitios. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I think. And you see, you see, sightseeing is not act. It's not activities. So, for example, like I like canyoning. Canyoning is not sightseeing. No, no. no. Sight so uh, sightseeing is when you're really looking at something famous of the place where you are. It could be a monument or a historical landscape. place, landscape. Mm. Uh -huh. That could For me, be and when I, I listen to this, I say I always think of a landscape because mm -hmm. like yeah, you just this is one of the things we do in the summer actually because mm -hmm. it's, it's very relaxing. You know, when mm -hmm. you go to the mountains, for example, to be to see all the trees, to see vegetation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's relaxing. So we like I enjoy very much sightseeing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's difficult to translate it into Spanish because. Uh, is, I would say hacer turismo, but hacer turismo is very generic. Because it's very Spanish. generic, and yeah. and what you were describing as well, Monica. If you go into the uh, if you go into the mountains, you enjoy seeing the views. Which, if the landscapes, when you're saying landscapes, I would say seeing the views. But sightseeing a site is something that is renowned in the place that you are. So it could be in your case that you go in the mountains and there might be and a specific right site. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. when I go to Asturias, we often do the Ruta de Caris, mm -hmm. which is a very famous walk along a mine track. And you can see the Naranja de Bulnes, which is a, a very famous site because it's a mm -hmm. mountain peak. That would be sightseeing. Okay, yeah. so if you go there because it's a famous site to see, yeah. people Renown. say go there and mm -hmm. you can see the Naranjo de Bulnes, right? But if it's just trees, like anywhere, then that's enjoying the views. So a site is something that is like a renowned tourist destination or something to see that is famous or typical of the place. Uh -huh. Very good clarification of this term mm -hmm. because I don't think many people know that. Gemma mm -hmm. says, me too. She enjoys, mm -hmm. I think she means sightseeing, and I take mm -hmm. a lot of photos. A lot of photos. Yes. Yeah, I, I enjoy that. I make lots of pictures. Well, now it's so easy because you do it with a mobile phone. Uh -huh. no, I'm no hopeless problem. in pictures. I never take yeah. pictures. <laughs> I no? Say, no, I say to my family, take a picture. <laughs> take a picture. No, no, I'm I hopeless. do. I do all the time yeah. because I'm mm -hmm. on Instagram and I usually share these pictures. Oh, you're very See, Yeah, yeah, come on. We, I mean, so I've seen. But mm -hmm. uh, I no, I enjoy pictures. It's like a kind of art. I mm -hmm. not that I am an artist, but <laughs> I try. Uh, I try at least. Okay, let's mm -hmm. go, go. Let's continue with this. Ah, this is another one that is quite difficult. I, I notice that many times the students never get this uh, mm -hmm. because they confuse this expression with um, "I am used to." Mm -hmm. And I used to, this is always the confusion and mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, uh, I think the, the trick here is to think of an example and try to internalize you, the, the meaning. Because if you don't really understand the meaning, it's very difficult to remember it. Mm -hmm. I used to go, for example, I used to go to the Netherlands uh, for Christmas, but not anymore because of the COVID, for example. Mm -hmm. Antes iba. So mm -hmm. antes o solía ir. 
And mm -hmm. I used to go, but this doesn't have to, anything to do with I'm getting or I get used to or I'm used to that has the verb to be or get. Mm -hmm. This I used to go is something that you did in the past and you don't do anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why the input. Uh, but nowadays I stay at home because of the <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's no other word. I cannot go anywhere. I used to go to the beach, uh, but mm -hmm. nowadays I stay at home with my dog <laughs> mm -hmm. don't, don't, because I cannot go anywhere. No, uh, mm -hmm. So it's a combination of past and present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember, used to without to be and without yet. Get, get, which Because that means to yeah. become accustomed to. To be accustomed to something. That's something different. Uh -huh. So remember that. I went, let me see if mm -hmm. uh, there's a comment. And oh, Rafa, you're here. Hi, and Antonio. Uh, hi, and, Rafa, and Antonio. Look, and, uh, Antonio says, I have been to Ruta del Cares. It's amazing. It oh, is. It's yeah. lovely. It's a lovely yeah. walk. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, wait a minute. Okay, let me okay. go back. Um, and, and now, one more point, maybe, if I can yeah. just make about used to, because yeah. I often find that my students often make mistakes. Sometimes they do the mistakes that you've mentioned by mixing it up with the verb mm -hmm. to become accustomed to, to. which mm -hmm. is, for example, I'm, I'm getting used to doing um, uh, a live stream class. <laughs> because it's something I didn't used to do in the past and now I'm getting used to working online. That's to be accustomed to. But used to, as Monica said, this used to is a, a, a habit in the past. And just remember that if you're talking about habits in the present, that's when you use the word usually with present simple. Oh, right. So I usually go, you, Monica, you usually go to the Netherlands at Christmas. Mm. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And um, when I was younger, I used to go to England at Christmas. But then my parents and my family moved to New Zealand. And now I usually go to New Zealand. Okay. Right. Okay. So that, right. that is another thing I wanted to say about get used to to distinguish it from this expression is that get in Spanish I get used is, is used usually when in Spanish we say me estoy acostumbrando. It's kind of like reflexive. Mm -hmm. So the action is it's for you for yourself. Like me estoy. I'm getting used to. Mm -hmm. uh, doing live streams. I'm, I'm getting used to, uh, I don't know, video conferences because I never did video conference before. So that what that indicates is the process. It's a mm -hmm. process that is a continuous process. In this case of learning something, I'm getting used to my partner. My partner uh, is a pain in the neck. <laughs> I'm getting used to, for example. This, this, uh -huh. I'm getting used to him or to her or whoever. No? Let mm -hmm. me see another comment here. Um, uh, Elias says, uh, yeah, uh, Elias, uh, I, I'm an intermediate, but I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I know that we are not speaking, we're not using any Spanish, almost no Spanish. And so it's more difficult because my followers are usually, some some of my followers are, are beginners and low intermediate. And so this kind of Facebook life for them is a big challenge. But we try to speak slowly and we put the comments and, well, and you can do the replay, Elias, you replay. And that will be, I think it will help you with your English if you do the replay, because we try to explain it slowly, I hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's go back to our banners. And what do we have here? Ah. Uh, then the last one we have here is, I went to, but next year I will go. Okay, this is the combination of past and future. Okay, can, uh, can you think of an example, please? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. last year I went to Peniscola, mm -hmm. but, uh, and this year we're not sure where we'll go, but uh, next year 
I'll go to New Zealand, definitely. I hope, please. I hope COVID yeah, is over and I can go a, back to New Zealand because I haven't, haven't been to been New Zealand for three Zealand. years now. Three years now. Three yeah. years, yeah. And so I want to see my family. 48, no, 36 hours, you said. Mm -hmm, 36 yeah, hours. What do you do when you arrive there? You just fall dead. You drop dead. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you huh? you, tend, to, you tend to fall asleep around three o'clock in the afternoon and yeah. it's six o'clock in the evening. You can't start. I mean, I'm always asleep. So, <laughs> and also in this kind of countries, when you go to New Zealand, uh, mm -hmm. you you have to go at least for 15 days because otherwise, yeah, it's no, not worth, no, three weeks, three weeks, three weeks. You usually mm -hmm. go three weeks because yeah, one because week is is only jet, well, yeah, and one week is jet lag. I mean, if it takes two days, nearly two days to get there, two days to get back. And you usually have two days where you are just so tired, you can't do anything. So one week is gone. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 <laughs> you know, no, no, so yeah. you, you have Especially one the, week for the journeys. And, jet lag. And, this is exactly. Jet lag. Jet lag. Mm -hmm. When you arrive there, you have this jet lag, which mm -hmm. is a common problem when you travel overseas uh, to another continent because it's mm -hmm. a different time zone time zone another part of vocabulary when you travel you start using this vocabulary mm -hmm. uh okay let's go let's jump to idioms and this is a one i want to talk about this one because this one i didn't know this idiom until very recently i never heard this idiom before <laughs> and 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 uh, i was I, I i i really love this idiom because in spanish we're more negative we say Un pueblo de mala muerte. And I think it's the reason why we say that is because in the past, when you were in a small village, maybe nowadays too, no? It's difficult to find a hospital. It's difficult to get to the hospital. Ah. So I think that's the origin. If somebody in the audience mm -hmm. knows better than me, I uh, will appreciate if you write uh, mm -hmm. the explanation to this. And in English, it's a very positive kind of uh, idiom. It said, a one-horse town. Lynn, have you ever well, been I, to I, that? <laughs> in a one-horse town? Yes, I have. Yes. But um, I don't think it's so positive in English. You think it looks positive. There's no word yeah. of death in there. But, um, yeah, but usually... yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a one-horse yeah, town it. is like, it's not very cosmopolitan. No, there's not a lot of yeah, movement. I mean, <laughs> there's only but, one horse. <laughs> but at least you've got a horse. <laughs> at least you, well, yes, it could be worse. And, you could have no horses. That's why I say it's funny because in, in Spanish it's kind of negative. It's like, mm. Un pueblo de mala muerte is like, wow, it's like you don't even have a place to die. <laughs> okay, because there's nobody going to take care of you and it's, uh -huh. it's, in fact with, I think we have this situation less and less because there's more there's more communication but a one mm -hmm. horse town I, I can I can picture myself like in a one horse town and this is a little horse I love animals so I love this, this <laughs> horse they are waiting for me yeah to make uh -huh. a picture to make a picture <laughs> to a one horse town so uh, and and uh, it's funny because we, I always lived in, in big cities and mm -hmm. I really don't know, but I often ask uh, students that come from small villages, how is it to live in a small village? No? Mm -hmm. and, and there are, like in, in every place, advantages and disadvantages, right? That's true. So, yeah, that's true. In, in a, mm -hmm. Okay, Lynn, this is for you and the next idiom. So, one horse town, un pueblo de mala muerte. Okay. Right. You know, okay. Yeah, everybody understands that in Spanish. Yeah. Okay, let me right. see this. And this one, I like this one. Off the beaten track. Now, you know the verb to beat, which is you can beat a drum. Yeah, you can you have a beat in music. You can beat somebody when you hit somebody repeatedly. Okay. And of course, to the verb to beat also means to win. In English, that we have two verbs to win a prize or a trophy or a medal in the Olympics, but you beat a person. You never win a person, you beat a person. So in sport, you beat a person. Now beat means to, to be the winner, okay, to beat. Now beat also means to hit. And when you walk in the countryside, when you step on the grass, the grass gets beaten down. So when people walk in the same path all the time, 
the track is beaten because it's walked a lot. So, so that helps when you're in the countryside. You can follow a track because many people have walked in the same way over and over again. Now, if you go off the beaten track, so you don't walk the track that where everybody's beaten it because repeatedly people have walked the same way. If you go off the beaten track, it means you go somewhere that not many people go to. And when we talk about holidays, this is often a very positive thing. If you go on holidays and you say, oh, Monica, I, I, I went to Asturias, it was great, but I'll tell you somewhere off the beaten track, it's much better. Don't do the Ruta de Caris because thousands of people go and do the Ruta de Caris. But I found this wonderful walk that you can do and it's near Cangas and it's off the beaten track, but it's quite easy to find and it's beautiful. All right. Yeah, this, the problem in Spanish that we don't really have like an expression like that. Not that I know. It's, it's mm -hmm. como, eh, que no es un camino común, no es una, común, una, no es una cosa usual. conocida, usual. Mm -hmm. Es como Ajá. fuera de fuera mm -hmm. de la ruta turística. Ajá. Maybe Rafa, this is for you. He's a tour guide, mm -hmm. and and maybe Rafa is saying also. I wanted to show it's como about one horse dance. Nowadays, people are looking for one horse dance to be quiet. Yes, exactly. Yeah, this is more mm -hmm. common. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, okay. So I was saying, fue, ah, here somebody says, Antonio says, fuera del camino más trillado. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. The off yeah. the beaten track. But it's difficult if you don't know the meaning mm -hmm. of that expression is difficult to understand to it. To understand because it. Because uh -huh. it has no connection with anything at least, uh, that you know. Because it's In Spanish. All, uh -huh. Yeah, it's very Germanic. The, mm -hmm. the, this yes. expression is absolutely, it's not Latin. This is very yeah. much a Germanic expression uh -huh. of That's the right. beginning part. Because, now we yeah. use it, Rafa mm -hmm. has used it nicely. He says, I love to go off the beaten track. That's what he said. I love to go off the beaten track, which means that he, when he goes on holiday, he prefers to do things that not, not the masses do. He doesn't like to mm. do the things that all the tourists do. He likes to do things that are more unusual. No? So you can say, I love to go off the beaten track. And you can also use it like an adjective. You can say, I know this lovely hotel off the beaten track. Or I know this lovely village off the beaten track. And you describe something, a village, a hotel, that is less common. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying Rafa is a tour guide. He says yeah, the Ruta alternative. alternative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it's just not very common. Yeah, correct, Antonio. I don't think I ever heard that expression in mm -hmm. Spanish. The next one is very easy because it's the same. In, in, in Spanish, it's exactly the same, to recharge your batteries. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you, you need to recharge batteries. That's, that, that, ex, that was exactly what I was talking at the beginning of, the, of this uh, Facebook Live. I was mm -hmm. saying that uh, a lot of people are thinking about holidays now because of the weather and because summer is here already. Um, and so it's a very uh, it's very easy to say this in Spanish. I don't think it has any any problem. Mm -hmm. um, uh, look uh, what Rafa says. When you come to Cordoba, we will do the <laughs> tour. Of Rafa, I, think you have I, to I, yeah? I am going to take him up on that because Cordoba is a place I've always wanted to go to. So when okay, I come to Cordoba, I shall look you up, <laughs> Rafa, yes, yes. and you can give me take a guided tour. Mm -hmm. This is a phrase of her. Yeah. Te va a coger la palabra. Okay, mm -hmm. banners. Let's go back to. I, I, we are a little bit slow, Lynn. We okay, have to sorry. Hurry up, hurry have up to then. Walk. Okay, to get itchy feet. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, then you, you can say this. To get itchy okay, feet. Okay, so to get yeah. itchy feet. Itchy is when you when you are itchy, you have to scratch because your yeah. skin the is pica. making is itchy. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So when we get itchy feet, it means to be restless. You want to go on holiday. 
Yeah, so if somebody describes somewhere and you go, oh, I've got itchy feet, which means that your feet are itchy and you want to you want to run away or you want to, to go move. on holiday, yeah. you want to move. Uh -huh. You want to move. In Spanish, mm -hmm. we don't really have a, an idiom like that. Tengo ganas de cambiar de sitio. That's de right, and to change. And a perfect yeah. example is me. Uh, when yeah. I grew up and I studied, when I went away to university, I always thought that I would go back to my hometown, which was Sunderland in England. And I and I thought I'm going to live in in Sunderland for the rest of my life. That was my vision when I went to university. But I was studying languages, and the first time I went on a trip to France, and I saw and I had a feeling for what travel was. Then I got itchy feet, and I never ever went back to Sunderland. And my entire life, I have had itchy feet. I've lived in different countries all around the world. And uh, I, I'm I a mean person too. with very itchy feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. This is funny. I packed everything but the kitchen sink. And, and this is easy to explain because, it's, well, this is something we, when I started traveling, I, I made this mistake. Because you're packing the suitcase and, and I got too much luggage and then there's a big problem. I don't do this anymore. So <laughs> this literally means... Uh, how, how do you say in Spanish? I hice la, la maleta e incluso puse el, la, el kitchen sink es el fregadero. El fregadero. El fregadero. Uh -huh. Hasta el fregadero. Uh -huh. But the word yeah. but there for the for the people, maybe they're not sure about the word but. The word but means except. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. a, a different meaning. Except mm -hmm. the kitchen sink, meaning that you packed everything. And this is a big mistake because also you have to leave some room when, the, when you come back because I don't know mm -hmm. what happens. When you go on a trip, you come back with more luggage. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to leave, give some <laughs> room. But I don't do this mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> Pack everything but the kitchen sink. Thanks. So. Uh -huh. I think it's related uh, to traveling and, and mm -hmm. it's usually a mistake. And mm -hmm. then we have, this is to hit the road. And mm -hmm. then, well, this is just also. Uh -huh. It means to hit the road means to start a journey. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's hit the road, which means let's set off. To set off is another phrasal verb, which means to start a journey. And this is an idiomatic expression to hit the road, which means let's let's go. If you like, let's go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's, it's sometimes it's very confusing because hit is the pegar and road. What mm -hmm. is it? you you hit the? What is the meaning of that? It's just I'm leaving. No, I'm I'm, I'm mm -hmm. hitting the road. So mm -hmm. to get away from it, or another mm -hmm. expression that can be related to holidays, because you're tired and you're stressed and you want to. Lynn talked about get away before. That means to mm -hmm. escape. To get away, so to wait uh, to get away from it all means to just abandon everything, <laughs> leave it there, never see it again. Many times we have this feeling like, "Oh, I'm going on holiday. Let's not come back," uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you think of your uh, the place you're living as related to to stress or to working too much and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Rafa has it? a question, but I'm yeah, not sure what he means. Hand, spend too much money. Ah, that, that is ser un money roto. Yeah, that I spent, I don't know the idiom in English, that you spend too much money. I don't know. Oh. Uh, uh, well, we have to think about this. Maybe we can Google it. I don't know. Money yeah, money roto, that's what I said. Uh -huh. Money roto, maybe Lynn knows uh, uh, I've never roto. heard it in Spanish. No. You could say the money slips through his hands or flows through his fingers, slips but through it, his fingers. That, that means, in, in, in Spanish, means something, someone who spends too much money um, without thinking about the future, in a way. Uh -huh. uh, uh, that just spends without taking care about how much money he really has. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. he or she uh, uh -huh. really has. Okay, I, I, uh -huh. I think we, we can look for that. Let me see. Yeah, I'm looking for it now. It says extravagant. You can be extravagant. 
or a spend thrift is another is another alternative. Oh, but it's, that's a little bit difficult to pronounce that. But it's 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 difficult to pronounce, and it's not so common to say a not spend so thrift. Common. Because we would I, just say you waste money. Uh -huh. You're wasting money. Yeah. Uh -huh. Many times idioms have to do with the I think the customs or behavior of people in in certain contexts, and mm -hmm. that's the reason why sometimes you get idioms that are not exactly the same and they're mm -hmm. not you're not able to translate them because mm -hmm. it's the culture that is behind also mm -hmm. in the middle maybe protestants culture take more care about not spending <laughs> so much money. <laughs> i don't, I don't know so. there could be some kind of thing like uh -huh. that you know yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know behind that because it's the, it's, mm -hmm. it's cultural some of the things uh -huh. are cultural mm -hmm. now we have another i don't know if you, you're I think it's your turn because I... Yeah, I okay. So in the middle of nowhere, this is an expression I use a lot. When you want to say that somewhere is very remote, then I say, oh, we were in the middle of nowhere. Of course, nowhere doesn't exist. And when you're in the middle of somewhere that doesn't exist, it means there's nothing around you. I love that expression, in the middle of nowhere. But it uh -huh. combines well with one horse town. I, I was in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere, uh -huh. yeah, that's right. In a one horse town. I was in, in the middle of nowhere town. in a one horse town. <laughs> Off the beaten track as well. Off the beaten track. Yeah, all together. We can say all it together. together. Okay, I don't know. Okay. I would like Lynn to explain this because we know Trip okay. is, a mm -hmm. uh, is a noun and trouble is a verb. Uh -huh. But trouble oh. sometimes can be a noun. And that that's is very right. confusing. And yes, this is an example for us. Right, that's mm -hmm. right. So this, these words are very common for Spanish people to get mixed up with. So if we look at those, first of all, the verb, there, there, there can be a verb to travel. So I am traveling to Portugal this summer. Okay, so travel can be a verb, but we're not talking about verbs now. We're talking about nouns, and we have several nouns here. We have the word trip, we have the word travel, and I'm going to give a third one, which is journey, because all of those three words in Spanish often are used with the word viaje. Okay, now let's start first of all. When you say in Spanish, un viaje, one, you cannot say one travel because mm. the noun travel is uncountable, right? And travel for us in English is the generic sense of travel. So I love travel. I love traveling, we often say. Mm -hmm. And often you see that word travel in compound nouns. So you see travel agency or travel guide or travel program on the television, right? So you often see the word travel like that with another noun and it's a compound noun. But if you go on holiday, you don't go on travel, because travel is non-countable, you go on a trip. So if you are talking about a holiday, then you have to use the word trip. I went on a great trip last year to Portugal, okay? Or this year, I think you, you are going on a trip to Corsica uh, or to, no, to Croatia. Croatia, Croatia. To Croatia, okay? Right, so a trip is what you say, un viaje. Hacer un viaje is to make a trip, to do a trip, or to take a trip, right? And you can take a trip or do a trip, which is like more like, like go on a trip. And when we say to make a trip, it gives us the sense that you've planned more things. And that's why we use the verb to make, but you can make, do, or take a trip. OK, and then we have the third word, which we haven't written here, which is the word journey. And journey refers to the transport to from one place to another. So, for example, if Monica comes and meets me at the airport and she says, ¿Cómo fue el viaje? She would say, how was the journey? That's what we would say in English. How was the journey? Did you have a good journey? which means, was the process of traveling pleasant? 
Yeah. So your road journey or your plane journey, how was the journey? And you say, oh, it was tiring or or, for example, I can say it's a very long journey to New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, journey is trayecto. In uh -huh. So That's it's like the process yeah. of traveling, the process trayecto. of traveling. So you go on a trip, you go on a journey, but travel, definitely not. Yeah, okay. exactly. Travel agency, travel. Hey, I think we don't have too much time left. No, <laughs> so that's this, the end of it. We'll have to make another it, trip it, another yeah, time. The, another, the, because we missed uh, we are, we are many of the vocabulary we have there, but I would like to mention the last one. Okay. Is tourism and to tour. Uh, especially, well, tourism, everybody understands. Uh, no, but the, the expression touristic <laughs> that mm -hmm. it's not very touristic a lot of people say that and in english we cannot say that it's that mm -hmm. spanglish so i want to uh, make a remark on that because it's very very common we say uh, and how can we say it then we say uh, for example that's a popular tourist not touristic tourist destination Mm -hmm. okay that, that that we how we make it into an adjective not as a touristic but tourist like tourist un turista can be a tourist but mm -hmm. also is an adjective here as a tourist well i think with i think monica with tourist destination it's a compound noun yeah. like i was mm -hmm. doing with travel yeah. agent yeah. or travel One, agency so yeah. a tourist destination, destination you're making mm. it more like a compound now. Yeah, and we do, uh, and we do have an adjective, but it's not. I, I oh, use yeah, it, we talked about which this. we yeah, talked about I, earlier. But yeah. I don't think may, uh, maybe in America they don't use it. I don't know. I but in British English, some people yeah. we can say it's a bit touristy. It's a bit too touristy Tourist. for me. Touristy. I prefer uh, yeah. touristy yeah. with a Y on the end. With a Y at the end. Yeah. Mm. yeah so I can say um, I used. To, I'll, I'll use some of the language we talked about today. I used to like traveling to Paris, but Paris nowadays is a bit too touristy for me. Yeah. I prefer to go off the beaten track <laughs> and to go to other places in France. <laughs> Why don't we wrap up with the idioms? Because wrap up with all the things we talked is too much. So mm -hmm. I'll do one and you can do another one. Okay. okay. So I can say that I start with one, a one horse town is un pueblo de mala muerte. Um, mm -hmm. written track for you, Lynn. Is, uh, I don't know the uh, Spanish translation. You give this no, no, so no, but you say track, in English. somewhere that's remote. It's not so touristy. Hema's got it right there. It's yeah, not so right. touristy. Mm -hmm. Uh, to recharge your batteries, you know this in Spanish, recargar las baterías, las pilas, mm -hmm. decimos las pilas. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to get yeah. itchy feet means you have a desire to go traveling. Okay. Mm -hmm. I packed everything but the kitchen sink. This means I, uh, bueno, pues, llené la maleta hasta arriba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you I, took everything. You took, took too much. Which is uh -huh. not very handy. Mm -hmm. uh, to hit the road means to start your journey. To get away from it all is escapar de todo. Mm -hmm. And in the middle, and in the middle of nowhere is another word again for a place that is very remote. So in the middle of nowhere, a one-horse town, or somewhere off the beaten track. They're all three ways of saying the same thing. Okay. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for coming and thank you our loyal followers, Gemma, Rafa, Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, we really appreciate you're here. Um, uh, I wanted to say that next week, I think you're, you're doing this Facebook Live with Craig. With Craig right? again. But mm -hmm. probably yeah. you have to do more Facebook Lives because I'm going to be uh, away, no? Oh, I'm getting okay. away from you all. <laughs> I'm not coming back. So please visit el blog para aprender inglés and blog del inglés, where you can mm -hmm. find a lot of free material. And I usually I'm going to write a post, but I don't know when about this. Uh, probably 15 more days. And you're going to find all this uh, material online. 
and it's written in Spanish. And and Lynn, nice having you here. Nice. Doing Thank you very much. Podcast. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And I think in your blog you should write a postcard from Croatia. I want to know ah, about yeah. how Croatia is when you go. You should yeah. write a blog about your holiday yeah. in Croatia. Yeah. <laughs> So, All right. So thank okay. you for having me. So, and um, as... remember to visit Lynn at, at, at your page. Put it like this.com. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. If you're yeah. interested. In way, if you're interested in lessons from uh, Lynn, mm -hmm. uh, please visit the, that page. Elia said, okay. I'm an old follower. Thank you, Elia. Thank you, Lorena. Thank uh -huh. you, Miriam. I'm looking at the names here. Thank yeah. you for coming. Mm -hmm. And well, next week with, uh, with Craig and Lynn again. Okay, All thank right. you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.